Hi guys, I'm YB Loon, founder of the House of Loon and real life practicing witch, and this is my first video. Today we're going over the top 10 facts about witchcraft, so don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, and leave me a comment reading, I subscribed. I'll write back and heart your comment. I want to know what topics you want me to cover, so write them below, and with that, let's begin. Number 10. Your gender doesn't matter. Magic doesn't care what gender you are, and don't let anyone tell you differently. All gender identities and sexualities are valid and accepted in the craft. A word of caution though. Don't call male witches, warlocks. It comes from an old word meaning betrayer and breaker of oaths. There are no terms for witches of different genders. Just witches. Number 9. You don't need to have come from a bloodline. Some witches might say, you can't do magic. Your blood isn't pure. I come from a line dating all the way back to Salem. It's as stupid as calling someone You filthy little mob blood. Magic doesn't care how old your bloodline is. You could be the first of your name and you would be just as valid as Hazel Althea Black the 16th. And for that matter, there were very few if any real witches at Salem. Number 8. Magic doesn't have to cost. You don't need cauldrons or wands or robes and a pointy hat. A lot of the time, you can use stuff that can be found in your own home. A soup pan instead of a cauldron. A twig from a nearby tree instead of a wand. Found a stick on the ground and now I'm gonna use it. All this power that I found, gonna totally abuse it. Dude, I hit so much stuff, do not get into my way. Cause I found a stick and I'm using it today. I got a stick, got a stick. <laughs> You can also use dried herbs from your spice rack instead of fresh. You could even use a standard pack of playing cards instead of a deck of tarot cards. Now, before I go any further, I'd like to remind you to hit the like button, subscribe and leave me a comment. I have lots of ideas for future videos, but I want to know what you want, so go tell me in the comment section. If any of the top 10 catch your interest, leave me a comment saying which one it is and I might cover it. Number 7. You don't need a path. Paths are like specific schools in the craft, like if you wanted to specialize in a certain subject. If you're good with plants, you might become a green witch. If you're into cottage core or just really love cooking then maybe you're a kitchen witch. You don't have to choose to be one or the other though. You can choose any, all or none of the paths. Me personally, I don't have one. I'm a jack of all paths. Number 6. You can come to witchcraft from any faith. Belief in the horned god and the goddess isn't necessary since they are part of the religion of Wicca which is a different thing to witchcraft. Wiccans might practice the craft, but you don't have to be Wiccan to be a witch. Number 5. Which plays into number 6. You don't need to give up your current faith or deity. A number of religions have the rule, worship no other god but me. The thing is, I don't. As a Christian witch, I practice the craft by invoking the Christian God, and I haven't been struck by lightning yet. Witchcraft can involve as many deities as you want, or, just the same deity that you've always known. The way I see it is that I haven't turned my back on my original faith, I've enhanced it. The only warning I would give is to be careful who you tell about your venture into the craft. In some places it's still not safe to be a witch. Number 4. You don't need a coven. You may have been told that you need to find a mentor to teach you so you can be officially inducted into a coven and made a real witch. This is nonsense. I am the type of witch known as a solitary. It means exactly what it sounds like it means. I don't work with other witches. I don't have a coven and I taught myself everything I know, as opposed to seeking out a mentor to teach me. You don't need to go through an initiation ritual either, though if that's something you want to do, then you can actually hold one for yourself. If you want to join a coven then that's great. Power to you, but it's by no means a requirement. Number 3. You don't need a familiar. You don't need to go out and adopt a black cat, although I would recommend it from a moral standpoint since black cats don't get adopted much because of superstition. Regardless, you don't need a familiar to do magic with. All you need a pet for is to give it plenty of love. Regardless, animals are sensitive to spirit and magical energy anyway, so your cat or dog might be able to help you notice when a spirit visitor has dropped in. Number 2. 
Experience in spirituality while not a prerequisite is a somewhat necessary skill to learn. A spiritualist can become a witch, but a witch doesn't have to be a spiritualist, though they do tend to come hand in hand. A lot of witchcraft is calling upon energy, gathering it, and directing it with intent, so a little knowledge of how to protect yourself from it will go a long way. As I mentioned before, there's magical energy and there's spirit energy. A spirit is essentially made of energy, so it's not just other witches and their curses or hexes you need to protect yourself from, it's negative spirits too. And finally, number one. The one thing about witchcraft that is absolutely 100% necessary, is knowledge. Before you even consider casting your first spell, you must properly educate yourself. Witchcraft can be incredibly dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, who you're invoking, what your spell ingredients represent and do, or what spirits you're calling upon to aid your work. There are a hundred different things that can go wrong. You wouldn't go rock climbing without proper knowledge of it first, nor would you go deep sea diving without a complete instruction. Likewise, you shouldn't play with magic before you know what you're doing. Thankfully, there are places that can help with that, and for free. Subscribing here would help as I intend to cover a range of different witchy subjects, just let me know which ones you want to know about in the comments section and hit the bell for notifications. Aside from plugging my channel, Google is your friend. There are thousands of websites run by other practicing witches and psychic mediums who provide their knowledge and experience freely. I myself run a witch blog on Tumblr which I'll link below. I'll only say, be careful with your research. If something doesn't feel right then definitely cross-reference from other websites. It's easy enough to find out if a spell, or skill or experience that's being written about is genuine by checking multiple pages. If you find only one reference to something, then there's a good chance that you were told about it by a troll. And that was the top 10 witch facts. There's so much more though, so if you want more of this, let me know and I might make another top 10. I have a series on crystals planned as well as other things, so stick around for that, and if anything in this video caught your attention, tell me in the comments, and don't forget when you hit subscribe to write below, I subscribed, and I'll heart your comment and write back. Since I don't have any other content yet to link on my end screen, I'll instead leave you with a collection of the best speed paints from my art channel, YB Loon Arts. In the meantime, blessed be, and everyone, stay safe. Thanks for watching.